So let's just go ahead and jump into this main topic. I think it's a really interesting um, thought is, you know, what if Disney did not buy Star Wars? I normally don't do what ifs, but I think this one is kind of, uh, it's on and off brand, you know, it's like business and creative um, thinking. So what if Disney did not buy Star Wars? So um, we're going to look at it from three different angles here. We're going to look at it from Lucasfilm what its what its state was before Disney. We're gonna look at Lucasfilm's position after Disney bought it. And then also from the standpoint of okay, if Disney didn't buy Lucasfilm, then who would buy Lucasfilm? So we'll start with Lucasfilm before Disney. George Lucas still owns it. And at the time before what they bought it in twenty twelve, is that right? So twenty eleven yes. they were talking about negotiations and stuff yeah so before 2011 clone wars is still active yeah uh prequel trilogy is done there are tons of speculation that george lucas was still considering developing episode seven eight nine by <laughs> he <seven>. was <laughs> yes so there was some times that he would say there will never be a seven eight nine and there was times that he was like oh we're developing seven eight nine and there has been leaks of like old concepts of what they called the Neo Empire, which was George Lucas's idea for the 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 bad dark side uh, officers that were after post Empire, kind of like neo Nazis. It was the Neo Empire or Neo Empire soldier troop or something. I don't know, something like that. But there's there's stuff out there you can see and look at, guys. Check that out. But so with with talking about George Lucas developing his version of 789, I want to talk about what that would have possibly looked like and why it stopped or why he stopped even before Disney inquired about buying Lucasfilm. So for me, I know he did say that he was originally planning for May 2015 is when he was going to drop his episode seven if he continued on with it. I think, like he said, we would have gotten to the microbiotic world, you know, midichlorians and shit, <laughs> which we're actually <laughs> dealing with some midichlorian <laughs> pandemic right now. They're attacking us, and it's called the coronavirus. Oh, boy. Um, I, I've, For me, at the time before Disney bought Star Wars, I was still a very big fan. No podcast or anything, but I did still have a very huge appreciation and respect for George Lucas since I guess I grew up as a kid with prequels uh didn't see a problem with them at the time and he was, has since been my my idol my hero so if he was going into it to direct it create it etc I would have been completely on board would it have been good or not I don't know I don't know you probably have a better memory of the whole uh him developing this Seven, eight, nine. So, what's your thoughts on it? Uh, first off, George Lucas is my hero. <laughs> <laughs> Look, this guy. So you got to keep in mind, right? And obviously, as a child, you don't think about any of this stuff. But as an adult, you just look back on George Lucas. I mean, the guy created effects in these movies that didn't exist. So I, I just want everybody to keep that in mind. Like when these original movies came out, these special effects did exist now he did use some special effects uh the stop animation stuff that they used like in jason and the agronauts um right and stuff yeah. like that um at clash uh, clash of titans but he they he had to invent stuff george lucas guilty invented pixar invented skywalker sound invented helped you know special effects like Dolby. this D dual, that's what I'm saying. Like this guy, and and obviously with people behind him, invented the way movies are made today. So with that said, with that said, there's a reason why Lando over here at Celebration Three, which was here in Indianapolis, waited in line <laughs> for like nine or ten hours just to be in the same room and watch George Lucas get interviewed. Now, granted, I was in the back of the room. I still had a chair. But I yeah, stood in line for nine to ten hours to watch him get interviewed. And I would stand, stand in line for ten hours right now to see him up on stage for 15 minutes. Absolutely. Um, now, now, would the movies been good? Right? Because this is the big question. 
right? Because people sh shit all over the prequels, right? People love the original trilogy, which, and they, they might say that his wife saved the original trilogy because she's the one who really edited A New Hope. Um, or I should say re-edited it mm -hmm. to make it what it is today. Um, you know, those films are beloved by everybody. And then you get to the prequels and everybody shits on them. Okay. But now 20 years later, people are finding a new appreciation for the prequels, which is nice. Um, but, but I tell you, I still say, you know, what say you all the haters that is still those prequels. That is blood, sweat, and tears. George Lucas, 100%. That is his like life and his soul right there. Um, so that's what he would have had to do for these new movies. And I've seen several interviews with him saying, I do not want to take 10 more years of my life to devote myself to do that again after he did the right. prequels and all the backlash he got. I don't blame him. Right. Uh, he, you know, he just had a new child and wanted to concentrate on family and, you know, I completely understand. He, you're right. He prioritized his life and said, Hey, everybody, I know everybody wants Star Wars. I've been developing Star Wars, but I got to put my family first, which he did. Right. And he thought he was doing the right, I don't want to say thought, he thought he was doing the right thing by giving it to Disney because I think he thought he was still going to have creative control somehow. I do too. I think he thought they were going to use his scripts and his yeah. ideas and he was going to help make the new movies. That didn't happen. Like I said, there are some interviews out there you can watch with George Lucas. The Charlie Rose one is great. Um, that, yeah. Oh, because that's him being completely honest after yeah. he sold uh, Star Wars and Lucasfilm. But you, Han, you're right. Like the scripts were midi chlorian based. Uh, he wanted to dive into the Force and the Wills. Uh, you should, you know, the Wills, right? From Rebels. Mm -hmm from the animated series. So if you don't know, if you're listening, you don't know the, the wills, basically the wills are the force. And he wanted to deep dive into that and that aspect. And i actually, I looked up some stuff. He actually wanted to make it clear that the wills were in control of the force. They willed the force and they actually used people as vessels to control the force. Like as I dug into it and I was like, wow, this is getting like real deep. And I was just like, I was like, George. Okay. Like, right. I'm like, all right, George, like <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> like, all and right, I think, man. <laughs> I think it's a fascinating idea. I think this stems from his studies into anthropology, which is yes. what he considered before. And I think it would have, it would have made to become a very, it would have had fun and adventure in it, but I think this would have been one of the most maturest and theoretical trilogies in Star Wars. And I, what I mean by that is like if you're taking a music class, um, you can take Introduction to Music, which is like it's the prequels. And then you can take a, a little bit more advanced course, which is the original trilogy. But if you just want to study the theory, you're going to watch seven eight and nine <laughs> well you're no that's a that's a good comparison it's music theory it's yeah. it's star wars theory 